Hello, I'm Jay James. I'm gonna be talking today about plasmonic mercury sensing with gold nanoparticles. I did this work with Jeff Crosby, Donald Lucas, and Catherine Koshland. I was part of my dissertation, and now I'm a postdoc here at Berkeley. Uh, this is project five, nanotechnology-based environmental sensing. Our technology is a gold nanoparticle film that collects mercury and responds in a change in color. Uh, the change in color is caused by a shift in the localized surface plasmon resonance. The result is a inexpensive, uh, highly sensitive, novel mercury analyzer. Uh, the interest in mercury analyzing or measuring mercury in the environment comes in part from our human actions, our pollution, our mercury pollution. So right now, the leading form of this pollution is combustion of coal in power plants. Uh, that's where you might see emissions of tons of mercury each year at a microgram per cubic meter rate. Uh, the end result is elevated methylmercury in fish that we eat, which causes uh, neurotoxic effects, uh, reduced IQ in um, babies born, uh, also some increased risk of death from heart attack. So the interest in measuring mercury at any point in this cycle and the uh, idea of protecting our environment and protecting our health. The uh, current interest in expanding our measurements, uh, one of the aspects or one of the groups doing this is the Global Mercury Observation System out of the UN uh, led by Nicola Peroni, who at the 2011 International Conference of Mercury as a Global Pollutant called for a new technology in mercury sensing that's portable, inexpensive, highly sensitive to take these ambient measurements. Uh, that's exactly what we believe our plasmonic sensor with nanoparticles, uh, will, that's exactly what it will do, and that's what it's for. Uh, as well as measuring mercury in anything you might be interested in. So these are all of the sites where they currently have ambient monitors. As you can see, it's not exactly covering the map. Um, so the more points we have, the better we can model the transport of mercury, the better we can regulate mercury um, globally, because it is, in fact, a global pollutant that, that travels all over. So mercury pollution from China affects us in America, and our pollution affects those all over the world as well. So back to the nanotechnology side of things, this, uh, these are examples of two different gold nanoparticles to, sh to highlight the effects of surface plasmon resonance. You can see that the solution of the spherical particles on top is red, uh, and the rods are blue. Um, you know, ne neither of which looks anything like bulk gold. So this is a unique effect of nanoparticles that we use to uh, measure mercury vapor. So when mercury collects on the gold nanospheres, it changes the complex dielectric of the material and produces a shift in that peak that you see there on the, uh, on the plots one above 520 nanometers for the spheres, goes to a shorter wavelength, as you'll see later. Um, this is because the localized surface plasma resonance is, it depends on the material and the size and the shape and the surrounding medium of the nanoparticle. So here's the actual response of our films to mercury exposure. You have a blue shift to shorter wavelengths, and we regenerate the films by heating them to above 100 degrees Celsius, uh, and that allows us to reuse them without any degradation in the film. We've done this hundreds of times without seeing any reduced in the reduction in the response. Uh, a typical response is shown on the right side where the peak shifts to shorter and shorter wavelengths over time. Um, this, is a, this is an exposure to three micrograms per cubic meter of mercury, so it's sort of in the range that you'd expect from a, a low concentration out of a, a coal power plant. Uh, the rate of the peak shift is pr proportional to the concentration of mercury in the sample. We've shown this and we expect this because uh, the collection of mercury by the gold film is diffusion limited, and diffusion is driven by a, a concentration gradient and is proportional to the concentration uh, of your diffusing species. 
Here we're showing the current iteration of our sensor. Uh, the flow cell is now machined out of a piece of aluminum. Um, we use an, impact, an impinging flow. Uh, this increases the mass transfer by reducing the size of the uh, mass transfer boundary layer uh, in the same way that you would get better heat transfer if you used an impinging jet. Um, this, so the, the jet of sample comes down over the film of, of gold nanoparticles and we watch the shifts in the plasmon resonance from absorption of white light in reflection off of a mirrored surface that is heated uh, at a temperature controlled heater uh, that we also use to regenerate the films. So this is a robust system that we've used to measure ambient air pumping sample from our lab through uh, the inlet there on the flow cell. Uh, here's a plot of some of those results. Uh, the concentration range is pretty wide here. We go from 800 micrograms per cubic meter down to 10 nanograms per cubic meter. Uh, the response of our sensors is, is, is fairly linear over that whole range. Uh, this is uh, also showing a continuous measurement. Every four seconds, we're taking a, uh, a point for an average over the last minute of what the sample concentration was. The resulting sensor is competitive with the state-of-the-art cold vapor atomic fluorescence spectroscopy methods, but does the work at a fraction of the price. Uh, costs us about $100 to $5,000 to make one of these analyzers ourselves in the lab, whereas the price for the alternative system is between eighty dollars and $250,000. And along with that high capital cost, there's a high maintenance cost and operational cost that ours uh, our sensor does not have. Uh, it's easy to operate. It also requires no sample pre-concentration. So this is a process in order to measure ultra-trace mercury like the ambient lever levels where they trap mercury with a gold trap, heat it, then take the measurement. Uh, because our system collects and measures at the same time, it's sort of a combination of both the, the analyzer that they sell and the trap. So it's, it simplifies that whole process down to a single step. What began as a fundamental study of the interaction between gold nanoparticles and mercury vapor has produced a novel, highly sensitive, inexpensive method to measure mercury that can be used by utility and industrial sources as well as the regulators to control emissions and the scientific community to research the entire biogeochemical cycle of mercury down to the communities who can now afford to measure their own exposures to mercury. Thank you.